Jamie Murray from The Wedding Report. In this episode, I interview Marcella from Marcella Polito Photography in Portland, Oregon. Enjoy. So here's what we're gonna talk about. I wanna talk about your business. Um, I wanna talk about what goes into the business. I feel like a lot of times, uh, you know, couples are just very numbers focused sometimes and um, you can't get to the conversation about the value piece. And so I wanna talk about what goes into that so that we can educate a little bit. Um, any specific advice you might have for couples. Um, then I want to talk about the business side of the business, <laughs> you know, yeah. what, what's working, what's not working. Uh, and then any specific advice you'd have for businesses. And then in some wedding stories, uh, whatever you want to talk about, it's all game from there. All right. Cool. Sound Sounds good. good. All right. Yeah. All right. So tell me about your business. Tell me what city you're in, uh, name of your business, uh, all that good stuff. All right, sounds good. Yeah. So I'm Marcela Pulido and I run Marcela Pulido Photography. So it's just my own business and I'm an inclusive traveling wedding photographer. Um, so that just means that I am, uh, I have a focus on like showcasing diversity and like real couples, not so much like styled couples or um, anything like that. It's just like my big emphasis is like showcasing like all kinds of diversity, races, inclusivity, um, and just really being a photographer for everyone. Nice. That's very good. And where, where and city are you in? Yes, I'm based out of Portland, Oregon. Okay. Um, awesome. But I, I travel everywhere. I grew up in Southern California. I've lived in Seattle. I've lived in the Bay Area, Yosemite. Um, but currently living in Portland, Oregon. You've lived in Yosemite because Yosemite is like awesome. Yes. So I actually spent a summer living and working in the park. Um, so it's very much like my happy place. Wow. Yeah. Um, my wife and I just went there two years ago and I tell you, that's like the best place in the world. I'm like, it's unbelievable. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, I'll cool. actually be going to back down there next month just to celebrate my birthday. Really? Awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. Happy birthday Thanks. early. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's a great place to go. Like how, how is it in the winter time though? Beautiful, beautiful. I mean, like it's just a magical, like winter wonderland. Yeah, yeah, it's totally magical. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. All right, so uh, let's talk a little bit about um, the what goes into the work that you do because um, I think a lot of times, and you probably have seen this yourself, but couples are very uh, numbers focused, and it's like, hey, how much are you? How much is your package? How much is this? And that's really right. where they're getting at just before they. I mean, you may not ever have a conversation with them. And, and um, I want to talk a little bit about the, what goes into the work that you have to do to make that work for them um, so they understand the value piece. Yes. So the answer, the short answer is so much. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so much. Because yeah. um, when it comes down to it, I've been running my own business for five years, but I've actually been a photographer for half my life. So for 15 years, I've been studying photography doing documentary work, film, um, and really it was just like a hobby that was, I was so passionate about that I wanted to learn everything about. So I would just picked up cameras and it took like up until six years ago until I got to a point where I was like, you know what, like I love this so much that I want to learn more about it. So at that point, it was really about learning how to, it was paying money to learn from like educators to figure out, okay, so how do I pose clients? Uh, can I do wedding photography? Is that not, because at first it's such a daunting task because it's, it's weddings. It's someone's right. big day. So it's yeah. like, you can't mess this up. Mm -hmm. So what went into that is like learning how to pose people, how to back up images, always having backup work. Um, and just really having an understanding of like lighting, um, having like na using natural lighting, having my own uh, lighting set setups to be able to kind of work under every situation um, and then it's kind of something that progresses as you get better at it so it's like once you dial that in it's like okay so I have to figure out like the financial aspect of it the social media aspect of it yeah. marketing it's just like so many other things that tie into it yeah, so it's, it's like the business part that becomes pretty daunting right I mean just like right I just want to do the work but I got to deal with all this business stuff too you know right because it's you're so much like not just the photographer and the creative yeah. you're your own accountant social media manager uh doing marketing and advertising you're doing literally everything yes yeah. I understand totally <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah.
Um, so let's talk about like, so when you, um, I, let's say I booked with you and I, and, and everything, what, what's the process? Like, what do you have to go through to like get my event done? I mean, I mean, you, how many hours do you have to put into a single event? You know, I've never actually looked into how many hours it takes beforehand, but I mean, quite a bit. So it, it starts with the initial inquiry with just like responding back and forth, answering questions, uh, setting up a consult. Um, I have a, a series on my website of just like wedding tips for like wedding planning, because at this point I've shot over 100 weddings and you know, this is the one wedding that someone's throwing. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure they have like a lot of questions. So I try to kind of just help and guide them along the way. So it's just like consultations, questionnaires that I'm sending, reaching out to other vendors that are a part of it, just to kind of make sure we're all on the same page before I even show up to the right. wedding. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so tell me about like, the, so do you do more than that prior to it? Like, cause you got to plan out like, what happens if it's raining? What happens if right. you know, uh, the weather yeah. isn't exactly the way you expected? I mean, what are you what are you going through to get there? Well, I live in Portland, so it rains Rain pretty often. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's pretty much something that's standard out here. It's just kind of assume and the worst with when it comes to weather and just kind of like embrace it. Mm -hmm. um, so it really depends because the thing is, I also travel a lot for weddings, so. Whereas in some instances, it's either a venue that I've shot at before, so I'm familiar with it, or it's somewhere that I'm just showing up the day of and just being like, all right, this is my first time here. If it's like a traveling gig where you don't necessarily have the means of, you know, flying down there ahead of time to do a walkthrough. Um, so in those instances, it really just comes down to maybe like showing up early, kind of walking it on my own time, just kind of doing a little bit of scouting when I have okay. the opportunity. Yeah. yeah. And then, all right. So then you shoot the day, right? Yeah. Um, do you have anyone with you also like an assistant or something like, like a second shooter? Generally, no, usually it's just me. Um, okay. usually if it's anything with a wedding of like over 150 guests or more, where it's something just really massive. Yeah. Um, that's when I kind of recommend having a second photographer. Okay. And then you spend how long typically on average at a, in an event? Um, usually eight hours minimum okay. is ideal. Yeah. All right. So now you've got 12 hours into this event, right? I yeah, mean, yeah. literally there's four hours of planning and back and forth and stuff. Now there's eight right at the event. How much time do you spend afterwards? At least another eight just on editing. Um, it's at least like an hour or two culling, so selecting the images, um, and then maybe like another two hours creating like a slideshow. So it's culling, sending sneak peeks, let's say two hours, two hours doing a slideshow, and then like another eight hours just editing before wow. doing the final delivery. So you've got 25 hours into in a single event, right? Pretty much. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you ever do like, um, do you ever do like, hey, I just want you to show up, shoot some photos and then walk away? I mean, do you ever do that or is it always editing and always the other piece? Always editing. Yeah. Okay. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, has anyone ever asked that? I'm just curious because I see, I, sometimes I see this. More so when I first started out, when I was at a bit of a lower price point, um, okay. I don't see that so much anymore. Um, yeah. And I think it's just because at this point it's, I've been doing this for long enough that people kind of see how much yeah. uh, love I put into the work. Yeah, say. well, and after they, after you have the conversation with them, you're telling them, right, look, I need to put, you, if you really want a good deal, good thing, yeah. I need to put some time into this afterwards, right? Right, so. yeah, when, and once they kind of realize, like, all the effort that goes into it, it's like, okay, well, you're paying for the entire experience. Yeah, and that's the thing, right? You got to get to that, you got to get to that, um, that part of the conversation, though, right? Right. Before, yeah. So let's say, so you got 25 hours in, um, what do you, what's the starting package going for starting? So the, yeah, so the starting package is at 3000. Okay. And that's yeah. for, in that's, that's 25 hours for three, you charging three, three grand for 25 hours of time? I'd, yeah, I'd say like 25 hours is probably at the minimum because that's not wow. counting like, um, even just like emailing, consults, everything, and then not even just that it's like how much time has gone into social media and marketing 
that yeah. even got them to find me. Well, plus your experience, right? You've got 15 plus experience, years of experience, yeah. right? So that, that adds into that, right? It's not just, yeah. hey, well, you're getting me for 25 or 30 hours. It's the experience right. part that comes in. Wow. That, exactly. Yeah. That makes, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, what, um, what is specific advice would you have for couples today if, as they're planning and looking for their photographers? Yeah. So I would say, I know like there's so many photographers and it's so overwhelming, but I think for a client, for like couples coming in, like planning their wedding, it can be really overwhelming to just see like the sea of how many photographers there are. Yeah, there is, right? And I think, yeah, yeah. so many, uh, and everyone is so talented and wonderful. So it's definitely difficult, but I think to start, it's really kind of fine tuning what your aesthetic is. So figuring out, do you want something that's more bright and airy? Do you want something that's a little bit more dark and moody? Or do you want something kind of in the middle? Do you want something more vibrant? Like figure out the aesthetic and then kind of like, all right, what's, what about the experience? Do you want something that's more posed? Do you need a little bit more help with directing? Do you want to focus more on like the documentary style and more candid photography? And then the last step is really kind of finding someone that fits those first two steps that you actually get along with because when it comes down to your wedding like you're going to spend so much time with the photographer like leading up to it like with the engagement session maybe the rehearsal dinner the wedding itself some people choose to do a day after session like you're spending a lot of time with the photographer so it yeah. should ideally be someone that you get along with yeah you think right you, yeah you, you hope you hope yeah. yeah that's that's great that's awesome advice um uh, I, I, I would not have thought of that. I'd be just like, oh, Hey, let's find someone that we know that takes really good photos. Right. Right. <laughs> do you, do you do other events, uh, or do you just do primarily focus on weddings? I primarily do weddings. Um, but that being said, I've shot like corporate events. I've worked with brands before to do like branding, photography, and lifestyles. I've photographed musicians. Um, yeah, because so you done... did some other stuff before you even became your own right. photographer. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Right. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, let's let's talk a little bit about the business side of this, and okay. uh, let's talk about. So for you as a business, the logistic part, what's working well for you right now today? You think? I think for me, it was kind of just really dialing in what was important to me um, in terms, just like as a person outside of photography. So then when it comes down to just like how I present myself, I can be more authentic in that way. Um, just because that helps me kind of connect with couples in a way that works for both of us, where it's like, well, this is something that's important to me as like a social issue. And they're like, you know what, that's important to me too. Let's talk about this. And we can even just connect more as just humans, as opposed to just like, I'm going to be a vendor on your wedding day. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I've actually heard of quite a few people talk about authenticity and how that it interacts with them. Um, personally, I'm going through the same challenge with yeah. myself you know how do you become more authentic and um you know be a be a real human <laughs> instead yeah. of being as as uh customers as customers right they're humans they're people um yeah you know uh, i agree with that for sure so so what would you say um is not working so well oh man so that's yeah that's a difficult one i think for me right now it's it's a little bit of of instagram right now is not working so well for me or social media uh -huh. I just the whole posting every day and the engagement thing has become exhausting for me so it's just it? like one of those things that i don't want to do anymore <laughs> <laughs> okay so we know that that is obviously a lot of work right i mean yeah it's a tough yeah. word but what about like the logistics part of your business what would you say is not working like i mean it could be things like um like I'm really trying to hone in my time management piece and I really can't figure this part out or, you know, what is it that you're struggling with, you know, that part of the business? I think, okay, let's see. Um, I've been kind of trying to focus a lot more on like the actual marketing aspect of it. So like mm -hmm. Facebook ads, uh, for example, um, and I haven't quite dialed it in yet. Okay. So that's, that's one of the ones that I'm still kind of working on and like fine tuning. That's not quite where I want it to be, but we'll see. Yeah. So do you feel like those sometimes like, you know, like I think about my skill set and what I'm good at, and then I try to go, I know I need to do these as a small business, right? Like I need to do all these little right. things like we talked about. Um, do you find yourself trying to figure out how do I sub that out 
so that someone else can do it for me, but it can still be, you know, like, I don't know. I, 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 I'm trying to figure that part out. Have you tried, have you thought about that? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, when it comes to like, like Facebook ads, for example, and that stuff, I'm, I'm still kind of reaching out to people within the industry that are, um, like pioneers in that aspect that have a really good solid understanding of it where it's just like okay you know what I'm completely lost when it comes to this like how are you doing this like what can you show me and some of them ask courses so I've been doing that sure. but when okay. it comes to like outsourcing um I'm looking into outsourcing like editing this upcoming year so I'm working with an editor that can like kind of fine-tune my style and aesthetic um because when you're shooting like 30 weddings a year and editing eight to 10 hours per wedding, it's a lot of time that I would like to have back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a, it's a full-time job for the week, right? I mean, for each right. event, right? And then you, yeah. you don't get any vacation time, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. And especially in a place like the Pacific Northwest where everything is like, the weddings happen between May and October. So it's a very short period of time yeah. where everything happens. Yeah, yeah. That's true, because it's either raining, right, otherwise? Yeah. Um, or it's cold and snowy. <laughs> Pretty right? much, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool, so uh, let's, what, what, um, what specific advice would you give other businesses if they were, you know, you and I are going to retire someday, right? We're going to move on. Right. Yeah, hopefully, right? Uh, what advice would you give those coming up in the business, maybe, that, that you know, specific advice? So one of the first things that I ever heard within the industry that really struck out, stuck out to me that I appreciated was put out the work that you want to continue to make. So don't just keep putting out stuff that you think will work or that you think somebody else wants, because if you don't really enjoy what you're doing, um, then you're just going to be essentially miserable if you keep getting that work. Mm -hmm. So if there's something that you really appreciate doing that makes you really happy when you're making it, just really kind of hone in on that and keep doing that because kind of similarly to just kind of being authentic to yourself when you're putting out something that makes you happy that you enjoy creatively it's going to attract like-minded people that are going right. to like that and are going to want to work with you and are going to appreciate you best for what you do yeah that's cool so i think that's, yeah that's very good yeah i like that yeah, yeah. um i get caught i i yeah I, I can see that totally because uh i like data <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I'm kind of a nerd like that. I mean, I can take like just on a weekend, like, hey, let's go look at this survey data from this thing over here and kind of like, just like, oh, this is cool. Look, look what I found. Look at this connection between this and this. This is amazing, right? Right. You know, and, and I think uh, no one cares about that, but who knows, right? I mean, but you're right. That's the thing that I enjoy doing. Um, right. That's the thing that you guys end up getting with the wedding report is because that's what I enjoy doing, so. Yeah, and see, the fact that you even like like doing the data and everything, that's still useful information for the rest of us who don't even necessarily have like the data-minded brain for it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, cool. Um, all right, so now let's move on to stories. And um, yeah. what's your worst wedding story or business story? So it could be a business-related story or it could be like the worst wedding story. God, okay. So like the, the worst wedding story, that I, it's always comes back to the same thing is when you're shooting a wedding you have a beautiful landscape uh there you're at the ceremony the ceremony site's gorgeous and you're just about the end of the ceremony and you're just lining up the shot you have it all set up and then somebody walks right in the middle of the aisle for the kiss shot <laughs> and it's just like no <laughs> <laughs> right at the shot huh right at the shot and I've, I've had it multiple different ways where i've had like other photographers i've had like the cousin the uncle bob we call them with the camera you know yeah. or like even a videographer sometimes they're just like what are you doing <laughs> wow yeah that sucks <laughs> yeah that one's always the most frustrating yeah and i mean how, how do you get around that because it's like Dude, you just got right in the way of the shot right. I have to get, right? Right. Do you like go up and run up and push them out of the way and like <laughs> there's multiple different things. So like I've had to like edit someone out if it was like far away enough and I could like manage to get it. Yeah. Or like if I've had someone literally 
it was it was like right in front of the couple and I was like way in the back to get the full scope of it so it was like I can't I can't run up in time I can't (laughs) photoshop you out so it was just one of those things where at the end of the ceremony I had to just go up to the couples and be like hey like I'm really sorry showed them the back of the camera and be like this happened and like luckily they were like oh it's it's fine like we know who that is like yeah it's okay <laughs> yeah it's Aunt Siri she does that every time yeah it's just like well I have to let them know as soon as possible so they're not like looking at the gallery expecting this right that, that's good <laughs> that's wise that you do that yeah yeah <laughs> so um so on the flip side though what's the best story you got for me I think okay the best one is two years ago I was still pretty fresh in the industry, but I managed to book my first destination wedding in Fiji. Oh, wow. And that was, they had fire dancers. Like it was, we were doing portraits out on the beach um, and it was just like really dark and stormy and it just really lent itself to have like the moody portraits. Mm -hmm. And we're out there for like two minutes. And then all of a sudden someone just started screaming like, run for cover. And we're just like, oh God, what's happening? And we start (laughs) running. And suddenly just like a torrential downpour just like hits us. And like the bride runs because she's got hair, she's got makeup. And the groom is just kind of like hanging back. And he's just like laughing because it'd been like so hot and so humid. And he's wearing like a full suit and everything. And he's just sweating. And he looks over at me, just like big little grin on his face. And he's like, this is the coolest I've felt the entire day. Like this is so refreshing. <laughs> That's I'm just so happy. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, not only the fact that you went to Fiji, but the, yeah. that that story in itself is is pretty awesome, right? It's, yeah, it was just really delightful. And it was just one of those moments where I was like out on the beach, and I was like, "How did I get out here in Fiji? Like, I yeah. never would have expected this. That's, it was a dream yeah. come true." Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um. What questions do you have for me? Um, oh, I don't know. Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> Anything, yeah. whatever you want to talk about. Um, no, I just, I, don't, I can't even think of anything. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, good. Uh, well, hey, thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate it. And um, yeah. thank you for uh, having me. Yeah, you bet. Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. I hope that you found it helpful. Please share it with other people. Also, if you're getting married or you work in the wedding industry, I would love to interview and share your information with other people. Send me a text, 520-399-8580, or shoot me an email at letschat at wedding.report.